Thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You may be seated. I feel so blessed to be able to be here tonight and uh, just looking at all of you and come from different places, the different regions, multiple regions gathering together. And I really feel humble when I'm able to see what God is doing within our ministry. Not only is it happening here, but it's happening globally. God is moving by his spirit. God is moving by his power. And I, I just stay humbled to see the move of God taking place in different parts of the world. And then tonight I see many of you that have come, even I think uh, Pastor Dell. I don't think he's part of this multi-region. What are you doing here? Uh, Pastor Dell, whenever there's something, he, get, he gets in there. And uh, we, 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 we praise the Lord for that. It's come on. In fact, I should begin to call him Dr. Dell. And uh, you call me a Apostle Son. No, 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 I'm, I'm, only, I'm only kidding. My wife is with me tonight, so I just want her to just, uh, just, just stand up. That's okay, just stand. And uh, she has her girls with her, right? Your girls? Why don't your girls stand there that she's working with? joined 30 years, 27 years, and I don't think anybody was there less than 20 years. And you can see the transformation that has taken place within their lives. And she has a, a special group that she's working with. Also, there's a, a special home, the Treasures Home, where they're able to come in. Also, uh, we also have uh, Everett and Liz. Stand up, Everett and Liz. They, they came with me. Everett, turn around so they could see you. you know, <laughs> He's been around for, they, they've both been around for a long, long time. Many of you know them. And uh, we see God doing a real new thing within our lives. And we, pray, we praise the Lord for it. And then many of you that are also gathered that I haven't seen for a while. Uh, this is a very special church for Julie and I. Because... Uh, we invested six years. I figured, well, I will come over. There was, a, there was a need that needed to be met. And we said, okay, then we're ready to go ahead and meet that need. I'll just, you know, I got a lot of experience, you know. Just going there. Just within a year, we'll get everything happening. And, you know. Boy, that year. I don't know if you guys are too much, man. That year stretched out to six years. Six years. But it was uh, six wonderful years for Julie and I. You, you, you really, all of you are very, very special. You're in the hearts of Julie and I all the time, just praying that God will continue to move in this ministry. Move right here in San Diego. And this evening I just want I want to speak to you from my heart I want to speak to you from my heart and uh, I have a scripture that I want to read and this scripture has been uh, demonstrated by this church as actually modeled by this church right here by Victory Outreach San Diego and many of you know it it's found in first Chronicles chapter 4 verse 10 and we find it's the prayer of Jabez. You can call him Jabez or Jabez, and you know, I'm from New York, I call him Jabez. And it says, Jabez cried out to God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. And God granted his requests. I, I, I love 
this prayer, th th this prayer is a prayer that is very, very close to my heart. This is my prayer. This is my prayer that I pray just about every day and every week. James was saying, God, I don't want to be that way. I want you to enlarge my territory. And the part that he says, I want you to stretch me. Stretch me. Sometimes it's painful when God begins to stretch us. But it's exactly what James is saying. He says, I want you to enlarge my territory. And the only way it's going to happen, you have to stretch me. He asked God to do something that had never been done before. Now that's what you call vision. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Lord Jesus, I thank you for the beautiful spirit that is here tonight. And I pray, oh God, that you speak to all of the hearts of your people that are gathered here this evening. And Lord, may your Holy Spirit continue to move in a very special way. And we'll give you all the praise and all the glory. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, there are some things, when you look in the Word of God, you learn a lot when you look in the Word of God, and then you're able to apply it to your situation. And there's many things that you can learn from the life of Jabez. In other words, he's, one of the things we can learn is that we need to have a vision. And not only do we need to have a vision, but over here, James was saying, I don't just want a vision, I want a great vision. While Jabez's friends were satisfied of being average, Jabez said, no, 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 Lord, I want you to do something significant in my life. I want you to bless me. I want you to enlarge my territory. In other words, he didn't want to be ordinary. There are too many ordinary Christians within the world. He didn't want to be ordinary. That's like Victory Outreach folk. We don't want to be ordinary Christians. He wanted to grow and he wanted to expand. He says, enlarge my territory, expand my vision. Make me something above ordinary. Now, there's three things that we find in the passage of Scripture, in the story, in the prayer of Jabez, is that, first of all, Jabez wanted his vision to expand. He didn't want to stay the same. And what we need to do, and I hope that we do it tonight, we need to evaluate and redefine once again our vision. This is why this whole ministry is based on a vision that God has given to us. And you hear it not only here, but you hear the same message all over the world. The message that we're speaking here in San Diego tonight is a message that is echoed all over the world. In other words, have you come to a standstill within your life? I think that tonight we have to take inventory and we have to examine ourselves. Have we come to a standstill operating with the, with the vision of the past? There are some people that are in that condition tonight. Is your vision still growing and keeping up with the overall vision of Victory Outreach International? Now, God has given us a global vision. When I say Victory Outreach International, it's not just an organization, but it's a family that God has raised up all over the world. Is your vision relevant today? Do we need to make some adjustments? Now, tonight, I believe God's going to be speaking to you if you need to make some adjustments and somehow your vision is not where it should be, then I believe God wants to do something special within your life. Because our vision, the vision that we have, the individual vision that you have, should always be evolving. Always be evolving. The level of vision that you had yesterday should not be the level of vision today. God always looking to expand and stretch our vision. Now, when I say about San Diego, this is a great model. When, when you look at the expansion that has taken place, this is, uh, this is the, the preaching and you find in San Diego, they, you find the, the expansion of a vision 
that God has given to us. It's always growing. Now, when I came for six years, I was able to work with the church, and we took it from one level to the next level, and God moved in a special way. And then after six years of ministry, then we turned it over to Pastor Al and Georgina. And from there, they took it. Now, there are places when you turn over a, a ministry to, to a pastor, instead of going up, it goes down. Over here, we find that there's been a, a great expansion in the ministry of San Diego. Every time that I come here, I see something new taking place. And I was sitting here rejoicing. I was saying, you know what? I, God, I take credit for some of this. <laughs> I'm part of this great vision. I'm part of what actually is happening here in San Diego. And it should be a testimony to all of you. I think we could learn by example. I think pastors and leaders could look and say, well, what are they doing? And what they're doing, if God is able to bless them, if God is able to grow them, then God is able to grow me as well. This is what we need to do. Look at the examples that God has placed before us in Victory Outreach. Now, God has given us a, a plan, a simple plan that the Lord has given to us from the very beginning. When you say, well, how could I grow? Or how could I grow my church? This is a question that many have, that they have a desire to grow. Many of you have a desire to, to expand. Many of you have a desire to, for your vision to grow. Well, uh, I, it's very simple. You know, when, when I look, I'm a, I'm a simple person. And when I think about the expansion that we've had, Globally, worldwide, it's just a simple plan that God has given to us. God will always give you a plan. Not only does he give you a vision, but he gives you a plan to be able to fulfill the vision. And he's given to us a simple plan. Sometimes we, when we look at simple things, we, we forget about it. But it's a simple plan that God has given to us. And when I think about the plan that we've had and how we began in East Los Angeles and how we're still working all over the world is a simple plan of the five E's. The five E's. This is something that we should not just study, but we should apply it to our ministry. Now let me refresh your memory of the, of the five E's. This is something that we did in East Los Angeles, something that we do everywhere we go. We did it in Europe, something that we've also are doing right now in Panama. Five E's, something very, very simple. Let me refresh your memory. Number one, we think about the five E's. It's uh, first of all, the number one is exaltation. We don't we don't put vision before the exaltation. You notice that we put exaltation first, and then after the exaltation, then we put vision. You say, well, why is it? This is the way it should be. Exaltation means that we cultivate an intimate relationship with God. Intimate relationship with God. Sometimes we want to bypass that. And there's some that say, well, I'm, I have a vision, but what about your relationship with God? Do you have an intimate relationship with God? Are you still praying? Now, there are some times where even ministers will kind of go through a season of being active. Many, many leaders and workers, we go through a season of activity where we're active, and because we're active, we feel, well, we're doing the work of God. But what about our relationship with God? I think all of us have been guilty like that one time or another. I'm, I'm a mover. I'm, I'm very active, just like... Uh, Pastor Al mentioned, and there's been times that I just ran ahead of God. I left, left, left God behind. Running ahead of God, getting, being involved, get, working and, and working very hard. And I felt that would justify that I didn't have time for my intimate relationship with God. You see, this whole ministry 
It all began with a relationship. That's how it began. Before we had a vision, it was an intimate relationship that we had with God. Now, how do you know, how are you going to know what you're supposed to do if you're not connected with God? If you're not listening to him, if you're not having fellowship with him, how are you going to know what you're supposed to do? How, how are you going to know the vision that he has for you? Now, a, a relationship with God, more than ever, we're involved in a lot of places all over the world, and lately, there's other generations that are coming up. We have generations that are coming up. Julie and I are already becoming seasoned, seasoned leaders, right? And we begin to see new generation that is coming up, and there's some real heavy decisions that need to be made. We look and we say, as we continue to move on, we're incapable, we're limited when it comes to taking the ministry on without hearing from God. And thank God, and I think that it is very important for those that are in our recovery homes that they learn how to get a hold of God, that they, they get to understand, they get, they get to know the power of God within their, within their lives. That's why I'm against this whole thing of, of working all kinds of hours and sending them out to work. What about their relationship? What about their relationship? What about their experience with God? That's in the recovery home. Not only in the recovery home, but a, a, our own personal experience. I thank God when I look back, I thank God that God touched me early by his Holy Spirit with my conversion. Very early he, he touched me. I, 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 you know, I, I knew the, the most important thing is know how, that God delivered you, God, God rescued you. And when I got saved, I, I said, he, he rescued me. I felt the touch of God upon my life. I think he needed to do that so that I could believe, so that I could not only believe, but I could trust him and feel the power of his Holy Spirit working within my life, the operation taking place in my life. And I knew what it was to feel his power, to feel his Holy Ghost moving in my life. I remember that I was laid out for a few days, you know, laid out for a few days. When I first came in, I didn't know much about the Bible, but all I knew was that, man, something was happening in my life. I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I received the touch of God in my life, something that I had never felt before. In fact, I was thinking about it the other day. I was talking to my wife, and I said, you know, I was talking about my experiences in the very beginning. And I said to her, you know what really strengthened my faith was that for, for days I felt like there was a baptism of the Holy Spirit upon my life. That even when I went to church, I would go to a church, I would try to get Nikki to go with me, and he said, no, I don't want to go to, I said, I go by myself. I took the subway, and I went to church by myself into Manhattan. And it was a church that, somewhat sophisticated church, but, uh, but the pastor was one of those old theologians from Europe. One of those old theologians from, from Europe. And I heard that he really preached the word of God. And I went. I didn't know much about the word, but I went to hear him. And he just took a message like the transfiguration. And he starts ministering on the transfiguration. By the time he finished, and then he didn't make an altar call. They didn't make altar calls in that church. I mean, he just preached the word and you go home. Not like Victory Outreach, where you're laying hands on people. But he preached the word of God on the transfiguration. And man, it was like something came over me, and I, I just felt that I... I couldn't cry. I couldn't stop crying. And I went by myself because nobody wanted to go. I went by myself. I couldn't stop crying. I left that church. I got on the subway to go back home. I, even, I couldn't even stop crying in the subway. 
It was just like uh, the power of God. God letting me know what God was doing, letting me know, listen, I, I am the God of power and I want you to feel just a little touch of my power within your life. These are things that you don't forget. Those ex that's what we need to have those experiences. Those are things that you don't forget. And you know, uh, lately, I've been, uh, I've been at home and somehow I, I've been feeling again the, the call of God. Just like we say, it, it, is, it is, this is the time. The time is now. And I've been, I got my little office you should have a place that you separate yourself, that it's, that it's holy ground. I have my little office, and I get in there, and then I start, I start just praying, and it's just like a call. I don't know if you, this is something that, I, I've had periods, and I'll be honest with you, I have periods that I didn't pray at all. Seasons within my life that I just went without praying. I said, God, you understand, I don't have time. And everything that I did turned out to be shallow. Not experience what we wanted to experience. Not be able to see what we wanted to see take place within that particular ministry or with that particular outreach that we had. But uh, lately it seems like I, you know, you have seasons of praying, the seasons that you just pray those prayers, right? You know, you ever pray those prayers? Hallelujah. And you don't even know what you're praying about. You don't even know what you're praying. What does what the Bible call it? A lot of babbling? A lot of babbling, just babbling and praying. And you spend a whole time. I, I hear a guy, for half hour. Then if I would ask him, well, what did you pray about? They can't answer. No, no, I just, just the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. <laughs> the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. Well, with me, you know, there's different moods that, you, you, that you're in, even when, you, when you're praying. And it wasn't that I'm having any problems, no, no, no problems. It's not like I'm desperate that I, you know, there's been times when you're desperate and you call, oh, I got a problem. No, 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 no nothing like that. But just the calling of God. A calling of God, a calling, a, 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 a breaking, breaking, a breaking of, of, of God's spirit upon my life and, and call me into his inner, inner chambers. Now, I found that my prayer has been different. I go in, and when I go in, I'm not, you know, at first I begin to worship and thank you, Jesus, you're a great God. But then I begin to talk to him, just like I'm talking to you. In other words, he is not only my Lord and Savior, but he's my friend. He's my friend. Just like you talk to your friend, just like you talk to somebody there are times that we need to come and speak to God like that and know that he is our friend. He is closer than a brother. He, he is closer. And I can't wait. Like I've been, it's going through a season right now that, that I can't wait. You know, in the morning, I just want to get in there. Lord, I want to talk to you a little bit more about this situation. Lord, I, uh, what do you think about this? And what do you think about that? And. Then in between, hallelujah, glory to God. The other day, I got another baptism of his Holy Spirit. The other day. I, again, like the very beginning, he went ahead and poured out his Holy Spirit that you get drunk in the Spirit. Be not drunk with wine, but be ye drunk in the Holy Spirit. And I was in there, you know, and I kind of get a little bit, you know, I don't like to show my emotions. You know, I'm even the type of guy that's hard for me to say, I love you. Even my wife tells me that. Do you love me? I say, yeah, you, you, you know, I love you, man. I, you know. 
uh, how long have I been with you, man? I mean, you know. She said, yeah, but I want to hear you say it. I guess women are like that, right? Women are like that. And you got guys, too, you know, that they, I know, Pastor Joe is calling his wife, honey, and, and you know, you know, and it makes me look bad. And some of you know, like, when you come and you say, you know, I love you, you know, something like, yeah, God bless you. God bless you. So I, I don't like to show my emotions. You know, I'm Mr. Cool, you know. I don't like to cry in front of people, you know, and I don't like to show my emotions. But this time, oh my God, God shook me up in that prayer room. The Holy Spirit came all over me. And I lost all of my composure. I came out and I, ah, ah, ah. Julie, ah, ah. the spirit of God. I try to say, Julie, Julie the, 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 ah. Now, when God begins to do that, it's because God is getting your attention. And whenever that is happening, it's because I'm praying about the vision, and I'm praying about the leading of the Holy Spirit, and God, this is your time. This is, this is the time. This is, time is now. And God, if the time is now, then what is it that you want to do? But then he, he, he wants to communicate with us, but before he communicates with us, you have to come and develop his mind. Come. Come into the oneness of the Holy Spirit. Come into the oneness of his mind. One mind. So he could communicate. And then he's been sharing with me a lot of things. A lot of things. And when he shared me those things, I'm, I, I'm, I'm the founder and I feel so small being the founder, but being the founder, we're over a great ministry worldwide. And God has been saying some things. He been sharing with me, you know, about what he wants to do globally and how he's moving, how he's going to move by his Holy Spirit. And how he's taking us, he's doing a new thing. And he's taking us into a new spiritual dimension. Those that are open to hear from him. So you see, it all, it all begins by the relationship. And there are some of you that are expecting, even some pastors and some leaders that are expecting something great. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen unless you're in that relationship with him. If ever there was a time to come into a close relationship with him and hear what God wants to say, it is now. It is now. The time is now. Not tomorrow, but it's now. God is about to do something new and something powerful. And the time to come into that inner, inner relationship with him is now. Even, even tonight, I, was, I felt like I wanted to, to break while I was hearing all this, it's just like I want to cry all the time. I'm a crybaby. <laughs> and if this is happening to me, and I'm the leader of this ministry, then God wants to do something in you. I, I believe that there are many of you Right now, as you begin to seek God, something special, something new, something new, something spiritual is going to be taking place within your life. There's no doubt within my mind. So when we talk about the, 
expanding our vision, the extension of our vision, then it all begins with our relationship with him. And I feel an, an expanding that's, 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 that's taking place, an, an expansion that's about to take place, even a greater expansion, expansion that we have experienced before. But it all begins with the exaltation. When we talk about the five E's, it all begins with our relationship with God. And then the vision. The vision. But you cannot separate the vision from our relationship with God. So when you think about, when I think about what happened in, 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 in East L.A. and and how we began, it was these five things. It was the exaltation, getting a hold of God. God speaking to us, to Julie and I. And then, then we began to pour out the vision of what he wanted us to do, what he wanted to see take place. And how he wanted to establish a ministry that was going to reach out and touch the world. But it didn't happen with my big thinking. And great ideas. It didn't happen like that. It was something that was divine. And because it was divine, it was something that was of God, you're able to see the results of it now. So that's when vision, vision comes. Vision. We want the vision. You want to know when I say about vision, you want to know what God wants to do in your city. You want to know what God's Will is for your life. You may not be a minister, but you say, I want to know. You say, me, what's your purpose for my life? What am I supposed to do? And the only way you're going to find that out is coming and shutting the door and getting, getting a hold of God, developing an intimate relationship with God. And then after that, then we, we get involved. Uh, simple again, you want to have... You, you want to see something happen in your city? You want to see something happen around the world? Evangelism. That's what we've been involved in. That's what's, from the very beginning, it was simple. It was evangelism. It was uh, getting a hold of God, recognizing that we need him, our relationship with God. Then after that, he begins to drop the vision. He begins to clarify the vision within our lives. This is what I want you to do. And then after that, you go out and begin to do it. And then he also gives you the, the concept of what kind of evangelism he wants. That's what he does. You get out and you begin to... Guess what I see in South Africa? Did you see it? This is what we're all about. We see in South... Uh, you may not know it, but uh, there's revival. There's a, there's a spiritual breakthrough that's taking place in Cape Town, South Africa. In fact, I would even say that within possibly by next year, that will be one of the biggest churches that we have around the world, South Africa. Because it was God's will. And all they're doing is following the simple thing of the five E's, getting a hold of God, uh, getting the vision of what God wants to do, getting involved in evangelism, then also getting involved in equipping. Equipping. That's what's great that we have... Uh, Dr. Dell. It's amazing the way we're, we're, we're kind of so different. You know what happened this Sunday, Sunday morning? I'll tell you what happened. I was telling Pastor Dell, you know, Sonny, he likes the meetings on Sunday, which I do too, likes the meetings on Sunday morning to have a different flavor. Sunday morning, the church comes a little bit more reserved. Now, Wednesdays, you could do handstands. You could do whatever you want to do. <laughs> well, Fridays, but Sunday morning, this is when we come heavy. And the people come. Feed me. And we feed the people. You know, we're a little bit more conservative. Well, this Sunday morning just so happens, you know, God has a way of, uh, of humbling us. This Sunday morning just so happens that uh, the president of the school, Northwestern University was there because he's going to be partnering 
with Vetti. That means that when we talk about equipping, you could get not only bachelor's degree, but you could even get the master's degree through Vetti. So he come to check it out, you know. Who am I partnering with? You know, who am I connecting with, you know? Now the guy is a good guy, a humble guy, and I understand he was a missionary for 20 years in Latin America, but something happened that Sunday morning that doesn't happen usual. The brother that was leading, you know, brother Darren, he said, Daryl, right, Daryl, 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 you know, I don't even know him, but Daryl, he gets excited, you know, and he was, le it was a, you know, he, he was leading, and I guess he really felt the spirit, you know, come all over him. So he started jumping up, you know, he, sometimes he gets and he jumps up, my God, <laughs> jumps up, hallelujah, all the way up. And he comes down, usually he jumps up and he stays, you know, there at the, <laughs> by the platform. This time, Holy Ghost came on him, he got so excited that he forgot it was a Sunday morning and he ran out and he started running around the church. And not only did he run around the church, but also our dear sister, what's her first name again? Pauline, Pauline, raise your hand. Now Pauline, you can't run over here because it's packed out. And I don't know if you've seen Pauline, but Pauline, she, well, she has reason to run. I mean, run around when she gets excited. She did about, I don't know, about 27 years. Huh? 27 years in prison. And now on the Holy Ghost, she sits on this side of the, the church in, over, I want to say La Puente, in Chino. And she gets excited. And she gets up. This is what she usually does. Gets up and she runs. And then she looks at you like this. Then she runs to another person. <laughs> In other words, you got what I got. And she runs all the way around. Well, this time, guess what happened? Well, Daryl started running. And as soon as he started running, she took off and she started running. Right? And, and Sonny sitting there. Trying to be so cool. <laughs> I mean, we're just a different bunch of people. <laughs> but how many know we have something to shout about? <laughs> Hallelujah! I don't care how educated we become how many degrees we have, how many doctors we have in the house. All we know is that we were lost and now we're found and it took the power of the Holy Spirit to be able to set us free. Hallelujah, sit down for a minute. Hallelujah, glory to God, hallelujah. So there's the equipping and then again that we come from the we come from the envisioning, the, the exaltation, envisioning, right? Evangelism. It's simple stuff. Some of you are probably not even doing it. And then also the, <laughs> yeah. I, then you say to me, how do we grow our church? I mean, we've been teaching it. We've been preaching it. I feel like saying and hitting my head, what's wrong with you, man? <laughs> Simple stuff. So then we come to the establishing. Now that's something that is very, very important, especially in the time we are now. When we talk about establishing, we're talking about setting bases. Setting bases. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about hubs that are set up all over the world. That's a simple plan that God gave to us. A simple plan that he gave to us. And we've been following that plan. 
And I'm so excited that it is happening. In Europe, we began in Europe, working in Europe, and then we started working in Amsterdam, and then from Amsterdam, Rotterdam, and those were two bases that God was setting up. Two bases that God wants to set up, and he's setting up so they can reach out all over Europe. And then what about the, uh, the UK? We've had a lot of setbacks in the UK, United Kingdom, but now it seems that there's a base that God is raising up in Manchester, England. And I get excited, but I keep on reminding you, you're a base. You're not just a church, you're a base that's going to reach United Kingdom. And then what about Africa? Africa is simple. Africa, Cape Town. Now they understand it. They understand that God has raised them up to be a base. And that's why God is building them and they're growing. And before you know it, they're going to be a mega church. But their whole mission is not only reaching Cape Town, but reaching Africa for Jesus. And then Mexico. You know what we've been doing with Mexico? I... I the Lord has led me to Mexico. I'm even speaking better Spanish now. More dignified. Not in the street slang. Pero quiero que sepan ustedes. Que el poder del Espíritu Santo está aquí. I even like to give my body language gestures. El poder del Espíritu Santo. Well, you know, this is time like time that we could sit back and, and say, well, this is retiring time. You know? I heard someone say one time, came up to me, oh, uh, you know, <laughs> came up to me, you know, they have a little church, they got a few hundred people, and they said, Pastor Sonny, what do you do when you've done it all? Done it all. We got a little church with a few hundred people, and all of a sudden they, they come to the place of having arriving. They have arrived. They've done it all. You know what that person that, that ministry is gonna go? Instead of going up, it's gonna, it's gonna go, it's gonna go downhill. It's gonna go downhill. Because somehow they, they they've lost that that cutting edge and, and they lost that that hunger for the expansion of their vision for the stretching that God wants to do upon their lives. But uh, when I think about the us, some people say, well, Pastor Sonny, when are you going to say, well, yeah, I'm more involved than ever. I'm more excited than ever. Now, I'm not just, I'm not involved in taking cities. Before we used to take cities, East LA for Jesus. San Diego for Jesus. La Puente for Jesus. No, 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 no. Julie and I are not just involved in taking cities. God has elevated us. God has a stretcher. God has elevated our vision. Now we're involved in taking continents for Jesus. Continents for Jesus. Already we got continent of Africa. That's on the move. But then also lately, you know, I, I never really worked with the, with the Spanish that much. You know, I was working always with the English and the Spanish. And when I, Mexico, you guys are doing a great job. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Gloria a Dios. Sigue adelante. <laughs> but all of a sudden, with the last two years or so, the Lord put a burden on me and said, I want to do some great things in Mexico. And, and, and God began to show me, I'm, I'm raising Mexico up as a base that's going to be able to take all of Latin America for Jesus. Now, it, it, it took me 
two years to internalize the vision with them. Because I would talk to them and preach to them, Hallelujah, God is raising you up. The day come to them. You know. <laughs> I know in their mind, I'm having enough problems in my city. We don't even take continents. And you know, they hadn't moved out of Mexico. Their vision was limited. They had a limited vision. And God wanted to expand, expand their vision. And all of a sudden, we just kept on. And then all of a sudden, they came up with it. They said, Pastor Sonny, God spoke to us, and we want to go out. And the first place we're going to go into Latin America is going to be Panama. <laughs> Panama for Jesus. Well, let me tell you now, there is a ministry that we have in Panama. We have not only a building for recovery home and a building for a church, but also we found another building and it's going to be our very first UTC in Latin America. It officially opens in June. And already we have people that want to go. I'm going to be going pretty soon. Over, I've been over, back and forth. This time I'm going to be going back. And, and, and I'm going to be going. We have a whole team that's there right now. See, when we talk about evangelism, you have to have evangelism that's going to identify with the people you're trying to reach. So what do we have? Over there, everybody likes the salsa. Oh, the salsa. So who did I get? I don't know if you know Papo. No, you don't know him. Okay, well. <laughs> Pop was a salsa singer. And he sings salsa with orchestras. And it just so happened, Papa come my way and said, Pastor, Sonny, you got anything for me? I said, I sure do. But I want you to go to Panama for a few months. And I thought he was like, a few months? He said, no, I, 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 I'm ready to go. So he went to Panama. Now, we had Manuel. You know Manuel. Are you there? Yeah. <laughs> Manuel from Venezuela. How many know Manuel from Venezuela, right? Manuel. And now, Manuel only knows his one way of evangelism. That's why we got to be able to be diverse when it comes to evangelism, trying to reach the people that we're trying to reach. Evangelize, and, and the evangelism that's going to touch the people that we're trying to touch. Manuel, all he knows is the ghetto. You're going to see it in his face. Hallelujah. You know, it just goes in there. <laughs> and he sets up a meeting in the ghetto. And hallelujah, the ghetto. And come. And, and that's great. But in Panama, there's another way also of evangelizing. So evangelizing with the music that they like to hear. Okay? And uh, concerts in the street. You know. So we sent Papa over there. So guess what, Papa? Papa's known. This guy is known all over Latin America. So I sent him over there, and then uh, I says, "You go ahead and prepare the way that we're going to be coming in a few weeks." Nikki and I are going in. Nikki Cruz and I. You know what? What Papa did? Papa's all over the television over there, and instead of preaching the word, he's preaching victory outreach. That I even got embarrassed a little bit. I, they invited him to speak in one of the biggest churches over there with over 20-something thousand people. And I got a little tape from his speaking, and he's saying, Pastor Sonny, and Alcanza Victoria, Victory Outreach. And if you don't know that, man, the whole thing was on Victory Outreach. I said, are you going to speak about Jesus, brother, you know? You're going to speak about Jesus. Well, guess what? They already have, uh, it's been all over the television, all over, and already they have it set up that Nikki and I are going to be going, and we're going to be over there speaking in the largest church in all of Panama. <laughs> now, what do you think that does? That opens up the door for Victory Outreach. That also opens up the door. It gives Victory Outreach uh, credibility. It gives Victory Outreach visibility. 
So not only are we reaching them in the streets, but we also have parents and, and people that have sons that are drug addicts that are in the church that are bringing them and saying, you know what, I'm looking for them. And not only that, but we're also a ministry that is unique. There are many rehab homes, but they said, we've never seen a ministry like Victory Outreach. So we're going in and uh, again, I'm saying this because I'm, I'm letting you know how, we, how, how you build ministries. Going in, and this is just the beginning. Then, then we're ready to later on go in with crusades. The crusades. And who do we have in the crusades? You know that uh, uh, Mariano Rivera, the pitcher? He's ready to go. He's ready to go. He's like a, he's like a god in Panama. He's living in the States, but he says, uh, Nikki, if you're going to go to the crusade, I want to go. Then we have another brother. Ismael, Ismael Miranda. If you look about Salsa, he's one of the biggest Salsa guys. He's a Christian too. He says, I am ready to go from Puerto Rico. I am ready to go to Panama. So what am I saying? I'm saying, listen, God wants to take this ministry into another level. Not just going into a little place and going into a country and think that you're going to reach the country by having 50 people. No, God is saying now is the time. Now is the time. The time is now where I'm raising up mega churches that are going to go out and make an impact all over the world. Not only reach a city, but reach a continent for Jesus. See, I should be retired and I'm I'm excited. Do you feel the excitement in me? I'm excited to see and know what God is going to do. And then just recently, we did something else. We, guess what? We planted a church in Tijuana. But listen, holla, holla, holla. You know what kind of church it is? English-speaking church. Now, you will say, well, English speaking church in Tijuana. They speak Spanish over there. Well, the last time I was at the convention, the Mexico, the convention that they had over there in the auditorium, I saw thousands of guys, man, that came up to me. Instead of speaking Spanish, hey, Pastor Sonny, how you doing, man? <laughs> and I said, and I know, hey, Pastor Sam. I said, what are you guys doing over here, man? <laughs> they said, we got deported. <laughs> There's thousands of guys that know about Victory Outreach. Their first language is English. And we're saying, praise God, if they've been deported, if the need is there, we're going to go in the name of Jesus and establish our first English-speaking church in Mexico. Does that make sense in the natural? No, it doesn't make sense in the natural. The ones that are there is Mo and, and Elizabeth, Elizabeth that, is, that are there right now. And they have a building. It's a big building. And, and they found a building right close, a block away, where they throw them out, you know. Where they come with the buses. There's a gate over there. And into Mexico you go. And they're over there to receive them and bring them into the ministry and bring them into the church. What am I saying to you? The time is now. If ever we're going to do something, the time is now. If ever you're going to get on fire for God, the time is now. If ever you're going to come back to that relationship with Jesus, the time is now. now let me move quickly, man. You guys got a hold of me over here. Let me go. No, no. Now, there's always a danger of coming to a plateau with, with our calling and our relationship with God. That's what I've always been careful about. I don't want to come into a plateau in my relationship with God. 
I don't want to come into a plateau within our ministry. And it's a lack of faith and confidence in God that keeps us at a standstill. I want to ask you the question. There's some of you that are in the church, the Christians. Have you come to a plateau in your experience with God? There are some of you possibly uh, leaders. Have you come to a plateau in your experience with God? Some of you pastors just have a job and it's been going like, a, like routine. I don't know how in the world there's some people that could have 10 people in a church and they've been there for eight years or 10 years. My God, something is wrong. I say something is wrong. If you are a part of Victory Outreach, there's a special anointing that God has placed upon your life. But the problem is, is that we come to a plateau within our lives. And then we just take it like a job or, or maybe it's just a, a task that you have and a job that you have. But do you like what you're doing? If you want to have success, you must like what you're doing. If you don't like what you're doing, then get out of there. You have to like what you're doing. And sometimes it's a lack of faith and confidence in God that keeps us at a standstill. Sometimes it's the problems and obstacles, not the, difficult, no, not the difficulties, but it's a lack of faith and fear that keeps us from being all that God wants us to be. Now quickly, there's some things that rob us of our faith and confidence in God. Number one, bad experiences of the past. Past failures. Now we're all going to experience failures. Past failures, all hurts, rob us of what we could be from what God wants to do within our lives. We should never let past experience and bad memories control our lives. We need to learn from them and begin to move on. Emotions also rob us of our confidence and faith in God. People are sometimes controlled by their emotions. Many people are controlled by their moods. Moody Christian, moody leaders, moody pastors. You know anybody like that? They develop an inferiority complex and their famous words are, I'm too adequate, inadequate. I can't do it. Now I'll tell you this. We had a funeral the other day with Pastor Bobby. Right? Pastor Bobby. You know Bobby was the first one that we reached? Very first one that we reached. In fact, we reached Bobby even before we had Victory Outreach. I, I was the supervisor of Teen Challenge in LA and Bobby came in. And Bobby was from Maravilla. And he was the very first one from Maravilla. God set him free and from there there was revival that broke out in Maravilla. Bobby spent about 17 years pastoring in Pico. Bobby was a missionary into Mexico. And Bobby was a miracle. You know what happened to Bobby? He couldn't read or write. When I met him, he couldn't read or write. What we did is I sent him to Bible school. And it was a three-year Bible school. Right? You know how long it took him? Five years. Five years to graduate it, but bless God, he did graduate. And God was able to use him. Now, I want us to look at as far as uh, we need to be open for change. And then we're going to be bringing it to a close because I know that I'm keeping you here a little bit. We need to be open for change. We need to move forward and be open for change. That's what this prayer is all about. Now, we have made many changes within our ministry. We're always making changes because we're always looking to grow. Our vision has been evolving. We have the UTC, right? Let me tell you something about the UTC. Do you know that our very first UTC directors were Pastor Ellen and Georgina? They were the pioneers of UTC in the East Coast. And now we have the UTC in Los Angeles. We have the UTC in Mexico. We have the UTC in Chicago. We have the UTC in South Africa. 
And now we have the UTC in Panama. And that's a fulfillment of prophecy because when God speaks about the generation, he talks about that the descendants, your descendants, when he said your descendants will inherit the nations. This is why I'm looking at the new generation, man. Be ready, man. Be ready. I, 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 I believe that we're not just going to have churches of a thousand people. We're not, we're not going to just have churches of, of 800 people. This is the time that God is saying, I am ready to pour out my spirit. The time is now. And God is going to be raising up mega churches in Victory Outreach. This is with all that descendants. The descendants, the young people that God is raising up. But the young people have to step out by faith and begin to believe and trust God. So when we look at that, uh, also we added multi-regionals to top leadership to assist in expansion of the vision. Team ministry also in the foreign fields. Conferences have grown not only in numbers but also in quality. TV ministries still going on, treasures and got going life in all over the world. Veti now into the master's program, our recovery homes. You heard it today. We're in the process of change. God wants to give a new generation the challenge of believing for the impossible. And then last of all, God wants us to move forward. He wants us to be willing to move forward courageously and in faith. Are you ready to do that this evening? Ephesians 3.20 says, God by his mighty power within us is able to do far more than we could ever dare to ask or even dream of infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, or hopes. God wants us to move forward courageously and in faith. God has everything under control. God is never a victim of circumstances. Big problems mean big victories. God wants to increase our faith and also expand us. Now, that's prayer. I repeat it again. Oh, he says that you would bless me. This is my prayer. I've taken a hold of that prayer. I, it's not your prayer. Jabez, it's my prayer. My prayer. Oh, Think about it. Is it your prayer? Oh, that you would bless me. Enlarge my territory. Give me the nations. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I'll be free from pain. And God granted his request. Now, if God was able to do it for Jabez, don't you think he's able to do it for us? Do you want to stay where you're at? There's a bunch of mediocre Christians here. I know you are. There's a lot of you that don't pray. I mean, you come over, hallelujah, praise God. But do you talk to Jesus? Do you spend time talking to him? I have my conversation with him. Hey, Jesus, I'm back again. I hope I'm not bugging you now. You know, and I just want, I'm not asking you to give me anything. You, you know, you've given me everything, but I want you to lead me. I want you to guide me. I want you to give me direction. I want you to anoint me. And you see the difference that will take place. I want to close with this. I'm going to tell you something what happened to me the other day. I had a great sermon on prayer. Great sermon on prayer. In fact, you, you were there. You know, some of you were there in Chino. And I said, oh. I can't wait to preach this sermon. Hallelujah. I got so much material. Art was there. Got so much. And I came and I started preaching the sermon and prayer and I had my notes. And all of a sudden, God says, Get those notes out of my sight. And He said, Let me speak through you. Let me speak through you. You know what happened? I just started speaking. I was speaking. I left the notes. I started speaking. I'm talking to them like this, and I'm just speaking whatever God is telling me to speak. And then when I went ahead 
And I said, okay, now it's time for an altar call. And I made an altar call. My God, I never seen such a big altar call. And not only did the people from the congregation come up, but then when I finished, I wanted to give it to one of the pastors, and I couldn't find one. They were all at the altar. All at the altar. In fact, I, I had to tell everybody, okay, it's over. You could go home. And then I, I, I never got so many comments on a message that I just threw the thing away, and I, I was just speaking whatever God was telling me to speak. They said, Pastor Sonny, we never heard anything like that before. Pastor Sonny, it was, oh God, it was so shaking. And oh God, God did something within my life. And I said, he did? Okay. He did? You know why? Because it was God that was speaking. It wasn't me speaking. I took myself out of the way. And I said, God, I'm taking myself out of the way. And I want you to speak through me. I want to be your instrument that will be able to speak to your people this morning. And that was one of the greatest impacts that we had as far as the response of people that were touched and moved and their life was revolutionized. That They said, we're not going to be the same. That's what you need. That's what we need. If we, if we begin to do that and let God begin to work through us, you begin to see something that you've never seen before. And that's what I want. See, he, he breaks us and he uses broken people. Broken people, that's what he uses. He uses broken people. He takes us and he breaks us and then he's able to use us. And that's what I find God doing with me. We, we're in a new season. Julie's so excited. She says, oh, where are you going to take me now? You know, I don't know. But I'm ready, man. I, I, I'm ready to go where he wants me to go. I'm able to do what he wants me to do. I'm able to do what he wants me to do. I'm able to say what he wants me to say. Because I want to be that vessel within his hand. I don't want to just come to conferences and... We hear nice music and oh, praise the Lord, and everybody, you know, da, 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 and everybody go back, and some people go back the same way. No, I, I, I want to see this is a time for an explosion that God wants to bring about, a spiritual explosion that God wants to bring about. That's why the theme is the time is now. I believe it with all my heart. The time is now. Neither you get with it. Move in or stay the same. There are some people that stay the same. If you stay the same, you're losing out on something precious that God wants to do within your life. There's a new anointing that he wants to place upon your life. And I'm going to ask you to come this evening and receive it. I want you to stand with me right now as they play. Now listen to me. Listen to me very carefully before you come. You know... Listen to me carefully. It's not just a, another preacher preaching to you. You hear me? It's not just another preacher that's preaching to you this evening. It's your founder. It's the person that God has raised up. The person that God has used to raise up this ministry worldwide. So what I'm saying to you tonight, don't take it lightly. I, I, I want it. I'm, I don't know about it. I'm pressing in. I want to be the first one pressing in. I say, break me, God. I, I, I'm not happy where I am. I, I want to do more. I want everything you have. I want it. This is what I'm pressing in. And he's calling us. He's calling us. There's a wooing of his spirit. Now, either you stay behind or you say, Pastor Sonny, I'm going to follow you, man. I, I, I want to be there. I, I, I want what God has for me in this ministry. 
and you're going to see explosions take place. I, I want to reach my city. I want to reach a continent. I, I, I want to reach my church. I want my church to grow. I want a new anointing upon my church. I want a new anointing upon my life and my ministry. And the time is now. This is your time to come. So as we play, I want you to come right now. sitting and I felt like I was going to break and, and I come up and I preach and I said Lord I know that the same way you break in me you want to break your people I, I, I pray that somehow that we will be broken with the things that break the heart of God I think that's, that's, that's where it all begins where that relationship with Jesus and that somehow you could say, Lord, I want you, I want you to break me. I, I, I don't, I don't want to just go through the same thing as usual. But I, I want to be, I want to be broken, Lord. That's, that's what I want. I, I want every morning that I get a hold of God, that I could come out of there with tears in my eyes and a breaking, be broken by the Spirit of God. Now you know when we're not into that, and we're not every day in that relationship it's pretty hard you know sometimes you come up and sometimes you don't feel anything but I pray that tonight will be the beginning the beginning of a brokenness that will come upon us and as we begin to break you'll begin to see God do great and mighty things we're coming into the depth of relationship with Jesus with Jesus and we could have good music and great music and great preaching even Tonight, everything that I said, somehow the Holy Spirit doesn't take it and drive it into your heart, then it's not going to happen. It has to be the Holy Spirit getting a hold of you, the touch of God upon your life. And I know that when you look at what God has done, just think about it, what the Lord has done in your life. Just, I think that's the first place to look at. That's the first step is say, do you deserve what you have? It, it, it's, it's all been the grace of God, hasn't it? It's all been God, the grace of God, the love of God, the mercy of God that's been extended to you. And because of that, you're where you are right now. Sometimes we have a tendency to forget that. But now is the time that, now is the time is now where God is saying, I want to do something new. 
I want to do something new within your life. I want to do something new in Victory Outreach. But I don't want it to be flesh. I want it to be spirit. I want it to be spirit. I want my spirit to prevail. So right now, I, I want you to lift up your hands to him. And just a, even a prayer of confession, you know, just, just go ahead and pray. And Lord, I... I've been coming. I haven't been fellowshipping with you, Lord. And I'm sorry, oh God. I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry, Lord. Go ahead and say, forgive me, you know. For forgive me, Lord. I, I'm not where I should be. Forgive me, Lord. That's humbling yourself before God. I'm not where I should be. God, I need your touch. I don't want to go on unless you touch me. I want a new anointing upon my life tonight I, I, I want you to guide me I want you to lead me I want you to give me direction I want to extend the vision Lord please oh God I need you tonight all over this place over in the overflow room just lift up your hand come on everybody begin to pray and cry out to God everybody crying out to God hallelujah 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 Oh, God, I repent. Oh, Lord, I'm not satisfied. Forgive me, Lord. I open my heart. I open myself, oh, God. Oh, God, lift me up, oh, Lord. Lift me up, oh, God. Lift me up, oh, God. Touch my life. I'm not satisfied, oh, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Lord, break me, oh, God. Break me, oh, Lord. Break me, oh, Lord. Break me, oh, Lord. Oh, let it not be a routine, oh, God. Not a routine. I'm tired of routines, oh, God. I want a real, I want a real touch of your Holy Spirit, oh, God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory if you God, can Lord, use God. anything, say, if you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Oh, hey, yes. you can use me. You can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Take my hands, take my feet, touch my heart, Lord, speak to me. You can use anything, Lord. Can you? 